Now at 10, smaller communities in the Pine Belt are getting some more restaurant options. We'll have a look at some new businesses coming to Lumberton and how that should keep more revenue in that city straight ahead. Plus, more broadband access could connect rural areas to telehealth where it's needed the most coming up. And it's going to be a cloudy night, but we got some relief on the way in terms of a big cool down, maybe even a few showers. We'll talk about it coming up, but your news at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Welcome in Pine Belt. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michael Clark. As Lumberton looks to bring in more growth, new restaurants are starting to pop up there. Three new eateries may prevent folks from leaving the city to find a meal elsewhere and keep more rev revenue in Lumberton. Our Trey Howard talked with a couple of owners about their hand in helping grow the city's economy. Folks in the Pine Belt have noticed the increase in restaurants over the past few months, and that growth has expanded to smaller cities like Lumberton, where people have been inspired to create a more diverse scene. I have never worked in a restaurant in my life. Um, I am a nurse. <laughs> Candace Cobb opened the Tracks Diner in Lumberton just two weeks ago, and she says so far the response has been positive. The community seems to be very thankful. They are very appreciative. The diner has become one of three new eateries in the city, an idea given to Cobb by her husband. He was actually coming home from work and he was hungry and he's like, Candy, let's open a, a restaurant in Lumberton. And I said, you're crazy. One of the other restaurants is Los Cabos, which recently just crossed the six month mark. With the recent grant money received to make improvements to the city, owner Ricardo Cruz is excited to see another element keeping dollars circulating locally. If you have more business in here, it's more job and the economy is staying in town, you know. Cruz has worked in restaurants for nearly a decade. He says he appreciates the dynamic a smaller city brings, like the relationships he's built with the community and other restaurant owners. Uh, before they open here, they used to come all the time and eat. They're still coming in here all the time. So they want to say little town like this, like make more close connection to everybody. In Lumberton, Trey Howard, WDAM7, on your side. Now the city also has the finest grind coffee house that is expected to add more restaurants like Chuck's Southside later this year. So a lot of growth going on there. All right, let's toss things over to Patrick now. Looking forward to some cooler weather this weekend. Don't have to wait long now. Yeah, we don't really have to wait that long. We are literally <laughs> counting down the hours until the cool air gets here. So we're going to see that cool air arrive uh, as we go into Friday night and into the weekend. But it's still kind of warm out there at the moment. We have saw cloudy skies all day, even some haze. And by the way, that haze, Canadian wildfire smoke. Can you believe that? Well, that's what it was this afternoon. A, uh, 73 is the current temperature right now out at the campus of USM Midtown Hattiesburg, that Mississippi Power Side Camp. A beautiful shot over the city of Hattiesburg. 73 in Hattiesburg, 72 in Oak Grove, 76 right now in Foxworth, 71 in Collins, and 69 in Moselle. So we're going to be quiet as we go through the rest of tonight, but tomorrow we're going to start off your day cloudy. But as we go into the afternoon, we're going to warm up 89 for the high, mostly cloudy skies. But we could see a few showers late tomorrow night closer to midnight and into early Friday morning. We're going to talk about that. We'll show you the latest future cast uh, run of the models and also give you the latest numbers for that big weekend cool down. All that and more in just a few minutes. All right, Patrick, thanks. This week, multiple babies in Jones County tested positive for drugs after deputies say mothers were using during pregnancy. Tonight, a deputy is sharing more about what he describes as a growing problem over the past few years. Jones County Sheriff's Department Sergeant J.D. Carter says if a mother is suspected of using drugs after the baby is born, the newborn is tested. And if the test is positive, the Sheriff's Department receives a referral. Then the case goes to Child Protective Services. Now, Carter says it's important to hold those parents accountable, but also to protect the child. The ultimate goal in the end for a lot of these parents and these charges are to get them into a rehab or um, the judge's court program, drug court program. He says it's not all about sending parents to the penitentiary, but to re rehabilitate the parents to back to normal life, to give their children a good life. You can read more about this week's arrest of one mother in Jones County for felony child abuse charges related to alleged drug abuse on our website. 
But we all know Mississippi being a rural state brings about its own challenges. One worsening problem, health care deserts. The gap in services is only made worse by the geography. One new study suggests the solution may be right at our fingertips if broadband is better built out. Courtney Ann Jackson has the latest tonight. It, it gives you a, a much better relationship with your patients because they know that they can, you know, see you more frequently without having to worry about where they're going to get gas money or someone's going to drive them there. And so it eliminates that barrier um, that, that is, is pretty profound here in Mississippi. Dr. Wendy Williams works at one of the community health centers on the coast, and she's seen how telehealth opens up opportunities to better manage patients' conditions. That's the basis of the latest study by the Southern Rural Black Women's Initiative. These issues are very real that people are not seeing doctors and diseases are not being managed. When you have these broad swaths of the state where you don't have physicians or you don't have specialties. So if you're really sick, you need to be able to have access to uh, reliable internet services so that the doctors there can connect the patients to to the specialties that they need. Mississippi isn't isolated in the study. Alabama and Georgia counties were also examined. All 10 counties in total facing similar health concerns. When you live in a rural area and you're 30 miles, 100, you know, 60 miles, 100 miles away from some uh, a provider, and you do not have transportation to get there, being able to be able to see via telehealth on your, on your telephone, your smartphone, your iPad or whatever, it's just, it's, it's just a dire need for that access. The three states are also where millions in federal broadband dollars are available. And the study suggests that by investing in broadband build out, counties can save money through telehealth because it would cut down on ER visits, hospital readmissions, and people being out of work. Courtney Ann Jackson, WDAM, on your side. The Southern Rural Black Women's Initiative says it has been working closely with the state's broadband office to make sure that build out takes place in the areas most in need of this type of service. An annual community event that honors breast cancer survivors will soon celebrate its 10th anniversary. The 10th Pink Monday will take place Monday, October 9th from 4 to 7 p.m. at Town Square Park. The event will have more than 40 food and health information vendors and the founder is a two-time breast cancer survivor who is now battling a type of blood cancer. The Lord put it on my heart 10 years ago to honor survivors and that's what I've been doing ever since then, giving back, not an organization because that's not what he want me to be. So I'm so excited about doing you know, do what I do to help ladies that's going through where I done been. We're focusing a lot on educating the community on health care. So we have a lot of sororities, fraternities, um, health health care initiatives and facilities that are stepping up and coming to pass out information. This Sunday, October 8th, breast cancer survivors will be honored at a pre Pink Monday musical event called Pink Out Praise. That's going to start at 5 p.m. at the C.E. Roy Community Center. Proceeds raised during the 4th Street Classic were presented to a local nonprofit today. Sponsors of the annual golf tournament presented the founder of Addison's Light, Melissa Morgan, a check for more than $16,000. That's the largest donation from ever presented from that tournament. Addison's Light provides young people with basic needs and social activities. You can read much more about that donation on our website. A house in paralysis. The speakership is vacant after the ouster of Kevin McCarthy. I'll explain where that leaves us 